all appointments during the approval hearings of the 20 persons who had been nominated for appointment as cabinet secretaries of the state and ministerial portfolios in the cabinet of the government of Kenya as forwarded by His Excellency the President and communicated by yourself, Honorable Speaker, on Tuesday 23rd and Wednesday 24th of July. And Honorable Speaker, the names are as read out. And Honorable Speaker, the report. Honorable Speaker, if you can protect me from the loud consultations. The report, Honorable Speaker, was saying details in great detail what we were able to engage each of the nominees on. The committee's report also has a retinue of all that was said in the committee based on what the nominees filled up in their written, handwritten questionnaire from their educational background, their professional background, places they have worked in, their work experience. And Honorable Speaker, including their net worth. And I know, Honorable Speaker, the question of net worth is what became very popular with Kenyans and especially our friends and colleagues in the fourth estate. Order, Honorable Members, order. This come Mukunji here, Honorable order. Speaker. Order. Order, David Speaker and your team. Sioi, take your seats. Take your seats, Honorable Members. Honorable Members, if there is a motion that you require to pay attention to, order the member lecturing uh, others in the, in the walkway. Members, one of the most important constitutional responsibilities you carry that was given to this House is that the president cannot sit in state house and nominate persons to office of minister or cabinet secretary without your approval. This is order, Kiborek. This is one of your most important responsibilities to discharge in this country, apart from dealing with appropriations and budget. I would expect and I expect nothing less or the decay. I expect nothing less and Osoro, you are the chief whip. You should be the last to cause disorder. I want you to hear each other in silence. I want us to hear your views on the people who are going to assist the president to run this country. I want the country to hear you on what you are handing over to the president to work with and we cannot do that by engaging in many kamkunjis all over the, the, the floor of the house those members, the, the chair cannot curtail you from consulting I have allowed you to use the speaker's recess room to go and consult if you wish but let's hear the moving of this motion, the debating of this motion with order, a reasonable degree of silence in the house. The country is watching you. And if the majority leader is speaking and nobody's even hearing him, then when you stand to contribute, what are you going to do? Don't degenerate to a level where you know we used to have in this house. A motion as important as this is moved and a member stands up to attack his local chief instead of contributing to the motion. Majority leader, proceed. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. And Honorable Speaker was at the point I was saying that the committee considered the curriculum vitae of all these nominees that uh, stipulated where they each went to school. And Honorable Speaker, on a light note, Many people out there, including members of parliament, believed that there are some of the nominees who had not uh, attained the requisite academic qualifications. And I want to confirm to this house that indeed all the nominees from their curriculum vitae and the engagement with the committee indicated that they had the requisite qualifications. Uh, and also noting, Honorable Speaker, that uh, our laws do not stipulate any particular quali academic qualifications. 
But even those that Kenyans had a very interesting engagement on, like the Honorable Ali Hassan Joho, he was able to, in a very good manner, exhibit to the country how he was inspired by Professor Ali Mazrui to pursue education having not performed well at KCSE or at high school level. And indeed, Honorable Speaker, I want to take this opportunity to commend not just Professor Ali Mazrui, but the later day Mazrui in Ali Hassan Joho, who has now also become a great inspiration to many Kenyans, Honorable Speaker. It is not every other Kenyan who sits examinations at KCSE level or at all levels and qualifies to join an institution of higher learning. But right from the example we are given of Professor Ali Mazrui to the Ali Hassan Joho of today, he's, a, he's exhibited to our young people that many of our own constituents, Honorable Speaker, a good proportion and a good percentage of our own constituents sit KCSE and do not qualify to join university. That that does not mark the end of your life. That not qualifying to join university at Form 4 should not mark an end to your pursuit to better yourself and for academic excellence. The Honorable Ali Hassan Joho exhibited the committee that is now pursuing a master's degree at Harvard University in the Kennedy School of Administration. And his commendable Honorable Speaker, and I want to commend the Honorable Ali Hassan Joho for not just being nominated, but also for exhibiting to Kenyans that he can also serve as, as, an, as an inspiration to younger Kenyans who should now know that you can uh, get on a path for academic excellence, even having not performed so well at KCPE. Honorable Speaker, besides considering their CVs, the committee also invited the public to submit memoranda by way of written statements on oath or affidavits as is stipulated in our constitution and our laws on our speaker in the public appointments act on the suitability of each of the nominees but our speaker to this end the committee received a total of 837 memoranda and I must thank the many Kenyans who submitted this huge number of memoranda and it tells you that indeed public participation was not superfluous, was not for the sake of it that Kenyans in their numbers did submit written memoranda. However, Honorable Speaker, 123 of these were hand delivered and 714 were submitted by email. Honorable Speaker, Section 6.9 of the Public uh, Appointments Parliamentary Approval Act provides that any person may, prior to the approval hearing, by written statement on oath, provide the clerk with evidence. Honorable Speaker, it's important for members to note that and members of the public also, that it must be written statement on oath or an affidavit and provide evidence contesting the suitability of a candidate to hold the office to which the candidate has been nominated. Honorable Speaker, out of the memoranda su submitted, 181 complied with Section 6, Subsection 9 of the Act, while 656 were not in the form of affidavits, hence did not meet the requisite threshold as per the law. Moreover, Honorable Speaker, out of the 656, some were actually in support of the nominees, and therefore inadmissible because the law expects this section 6 sub article uh, subsection 9 
how they impact your health. And an expert discusses chronic kidney disease and how to protect yourself. And Ivorian psychologist Nour Bakayoko shares some insights. It did not reflect representation from special interest groups. Six is that integrity issues and alleged violation of Chapter 6 of the Constitution. And lastly, alleged violation of Articles 103, 1E, and 194, 1E of the Constitution. Honorable Speaker, it is notable that all these issues and members and the public will be able to see from the report were exhaustively addressed by the committee in its report. Each of these issues, Honorable Speaker, there is not a single issue of the seven or six issues that I've mentioned here that have not been exhaustively, as you'll see in the report, been addressed because we are obligated to do that by our own statutes, that we must address each of the issues that have been raised in memoranda. Honorable Speaker, additionally, 163 affidavits contested the nomination of 10 nominees on grounds that they were, had previously been dismissed from office and hence they could not lawfully be reappointed to cabinet. Honorable Speaker, to this end, the committee observed that, the, that Articles 132, Sub-Article 2, and Article 152, Sub-Article 2 of the Constitution of Kenya vest the power to constitute the cabinet solely on the president. The committee also observed that the nominees were not dismissed under the provisions of Article 75.2 of the Constitution and were therefore not disqualified from holding any other state office. Honorable Speaker, that point was uh, canvassed in committee, and I know even in other fora outside the committee, this matter has been canvassed. And it is, was the finding of the committee, Honorable Speaker, that any of the nominees who has not been dismissed pursuant to Article 75.2 is not excluded from being reappointed after dismissal by His Excellency the President, and I think that was important to be clear. To Honorable Speaker, the word dismissal is in line with the provisions of Article 152.2. And members, if you read that article, you will see that the president, the article says the president may dismiss or reassign cabinet secretaries. Therefore, there is no option under the current constitution to suspend or to ask someone to step aside. He can only dismiss you or reassign you. And when the president chose, as is stipulated under Article 132, it is prerogative to appoint and dismiss cabinet when he chose to dismiss. In the words that are stipulated in the Constitution, he was well within his powers to do that, Honorable Speaker. Therefore, Honorable Speaker, there is no legal provision that bars the President from reappointing any person who has been indicted as being unfit to hold office under Article 75 of the Constitution or any relevant law. In respect of the age, Honorable Speaker, the committee observed that the nominee, the Honorable Justin Bidan Muturi, had not been dismissed as AG but had resigned in accordance with Section 11 of the Office of the Attorney General Act in consultation with the President to give the President an opportunity to reorganize, reorganize his government as evidenced by Gazette Notice Number 8440 of 12 July 2024. Honorable Speaker, the committee also conducted background checks on the nominees by seeking ref, uh, references from the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission on Ethics and Integrity, the Higher Education Loans Board on loan repayments for those who had gone through our public and private universities and funded from the Exchequer, the Directorate of Criminal Investigations on Criminal Records on each of the nominees, the Office of the Registrar of Political Parties on holding office in political parties because as honorable members do know not a single nominee who is being nominated to serve in cabinet should be holding a political party office. And indeed, those that did hold political office, like the Honorable John Buddy, the Honorable Ali Hassan Joho, the Honorable uh, Ambeza Oparanya, had evidence that they had indeed resigned from their party positions in ODM, the oldest party in our nascent democracy, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, we also did get from KRA on tax compliance and the Commission of University Education on authenticity of academic certificates. And Honorable Speaker, it's important because I've seen many people doubting certain degrees 
that in each of the degrees that were submitted to the committee, the Commission for University Education ascertained that those deg degrees and degree courses that the nominees submitted before the committee are recognized in the Republic of Kenya as degrees. Honorable Speaker, in considering the suitability of nominees for appointment, the committee paid due regard to the constitutional and statutory requirements relating to the offices in question and whether the nominees' abilities, their abilities, their experience, and qualities met the needs of the said offices. Further, Honorable Speaker, the committee was guided by the constitutional and statutory requirements such as the, our national values and principles of governance, the conduct of state officers, specific qualifications for appointment as cabinet secretaries, leadership and integrity prerequisites. And Honorable Speaker, it is in this light, Honorable Speaker, that we have recommended having looked at the suitability of the nominees as was assessed after scrutiny of their background, their academic credentials, as I said, their professional qualifications, their work and professional experience, their personal integrity, as well as their performance during the approval hearings, the committee observed and recommended that all the 19 nominees listed on our speaker without having to repeat the names in the interest of time so that I allow members time, adequate time to consider all these nominees and uh, have time to debate. That Honorable Speaker, all the 21, sorry, including the Attorney General, the former Attorney General, Justin Bidan Muturi, Stella 